You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for May 15th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our governor is going to listen to the scientists, no matter how loud the COVIDians squeal. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. And J.B. Pritzker, but he's not here right now. (laughs) J.B. Pritzker's busy. (laughs) He's busy right now. Yeah. In... I want to sing that song in Illinois. We love the governor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's, he's doing a good job. He is. And, yeah. uh, you Surprise. know, he doesn't have a lot of time for podcasts or us, but, no. uh, we, we do like him and we'll talk a little bit more about him later in the show. Although we are a valuable pipeline to the nine liberals who live in our community. So <laughs> if he wants to reach out to him, if he wants you know, to reach out to those people, yeah, he can just lean he's out the window. Votes already. He does. Yeah. He does. But if he wants to keep them informed, um, then he can just lean out the window and yell, mm-hmm. or he can come on to, onto our podcast and we can invite him on to yeah. talk and stuff and ask him about could, underwriting us for a couple of million dollars. He could put on his vest and take yeah. his armored <laughs> SUV down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to play a little game at the end of uh, this podcast called Compare and Contrast. Um, huh? <laughs> Governor Rauner, Governor Hedge Fund with Governor Pritzker. But for now, I welcome you all to uh, the Professional Love Podcast. We only have time for one fake sponsor this week. <laughs> this week's show is brought to you by our fake sponsor, My Primal Scream Pillow. Uh, available not for purchase by our not premier members. Uh, My Primal Scream Pillow, it's just a pillow and you scream into it. <laughs> Damn it. I was really hoping that we had some premium stuff to sell people for money, but we yeah. really don't. Actually, that's not true. We have merch at our website. Uh, yes, we do. Graphics by our wonderful nerd angel, Tammy, who puts them up there. And uh, we have the a angel couple nerd. More. Yes, <laughs> we have a couple of more things we want to add to our our suite of of sweet sweet merch that we're going to get to you know uh, uh, soon, very soon, soon down the road. At some point, very soon down the road. Yes, because that's Drift the Glass time has all kinds of great ideas. And one of the things that was fascinating to me this week is finding out that a certain uh, snarky website uh, whose name begins with C. Yeah. H I um, V E uh, yeah. is marketing T-shirts and stickers that say dumpster fire on them. Yeah, yep. And I thought, why aren't they sending Drift Glass a dollar every time they sell yeah. one of their thirty dollar T-shirts with your idea on them? But there just seems to be a real aversion to um, attributing that phrase to me. I think because it was in the, a political post that pretty much did what I have been doing for fifteen years, which is take david brooks apart atom by atom and that's not something they want to sort of filthying up if, if i were a 17th century or 18th century wit <laughs> that'd be fine i'm long dead everyone else is long dead all all the feuds are buried and gone but they i don't think want the shit that would come along with attributing the phrase of the decade to an asshole liberal blogger talking about a new york times op-ed writer that's just I think them. that's but, the case. Yeah. I think that's the case. Yes, they just—it's too current. You're too—you're too ahead of your time, Drift Glass. We have a, a vast readership of people we love and and who love us back, and that to me during a pandemic is worth more than all the attributions in the world. Yeah, I mean, we we have spent a lot of time counting our blessings. Uh, we do this every year, day. This year, this year we have. Yeah, yeah. and just um, having everybody under one roof and having them healthy and having them relatively sane. So you know, far, you know, yeah. I, I, I do want to say um, my deep condolences to my sister's partner, Joe, mm-hmm. who lost his daughter this week to COVID. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have heard from other people who have positive tests or are in hospital or whatever is going on. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, it can touch your family without any warning. Right. And uh, so we're, we're grateful to be healthy for now and uh, one day at a time. And we are t- working to be safe and staying at, staying at home and wearing masks when we go out. It's according to the state guidelines. And uh, here we are visiting with you. One well, of the adjustments we've had to make uh-huh. is recording this podcast on Thursday. Today, this week, 
We have to record our podcast on Thursday. We know that, you know, Donald Trump is probably going to sue Barack Obama tomorrow and it will not yeah. be on this podcast. Um, middle child has her AP test tomorrow afternoon. Yes. And she needs absolute quiet and uh, as much of the internet in this house as she can have. I mean, yes. and, and it shouldn't be a problem even if we were recording. But as we have heard from them, uh, mom, you have a very loud laugh. Yes. <laughs> and so yes, <laughs> they don't want that. It, that carries and they do not want to hear it during their eight. And I understand. I want middle child to do well on the AP test. Yes. And so it's, it's stressful enough. It's stressful it's enough. Apparently a 17 hour test. Yeah, um, well, <laughs> it's a long test. It's like it's, four hours. This is uh, AP. um literature and composition, something to that effect. So there are essays to write and she has to be organized about it mm -hmm. and it's intense. And she's an intense person anyway. She is. So she bless is. her. Uh, she's a, my daughter. <laughs> it's, it's a small house and the walls are thin and, and there's yeah. a lot of people under one roof that we didn't expect to have under one roof. Again, we are lucky that this is the case. We're yeah. lucky. No, that she we was this. expecting to take this test on paper at right. school, at you gym, know, gym, and that's gym. not happening. Yeah. So, uh, but we are accommodating her by recording a day early. Yeah. And so we apologize if we're not up to date on all of the news that happened on Friday. Well, but I suggest you... you go read Crooks and Liars because right. it will be, <laughs> it will be there and Drift Glass blog. We will be responding <laughs> to the day's events. It's mm. just not on this show. That's an uh, excellent shameless promotion. About anyway, I that's mean, a, that's an excellent shameless promotion. First of all, and second of all, those are real things. <laughs> those uh, are real my, things. My primal screen pillow is not a real thing. Uh, my <laughs> blog, the Drift Pass blog, and and uh, and and Blue Gal's excellent uh, Crooks and Liars blog, that gets I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people read that every day, are real things that has yeah. have real content that you enjoy. And please enjoy yourself. Dig in. They're both free. There's no paywall. Yeah. And you'll get the news There's of the no day. Paywall, but, uh, Crooks and Liars now has a new ad free option and it's a dollar for the first month now. So that's kind of cool. That started this week. So that's, that is kind of cool. Um, if you, if you just don't like ads and you want to turn them off, uh, you can turn them off for a dollar. This now, month, does that so. ad free option extend to all the other websites I go to? Do I carry See, that that's with the me? Point. Like a There's shield? actually, you know, what's funny. There's actually a, uh, disclaimer on that of it, it doesn't count on all the other stuff that goes on <laughs> you know who else pays their people the bulwark the bulwark pays their people the bulwark There's another good segue now, I, I try i stay up all night wondering how i can move from top who to funds top the top. bulwark that's a well that's a really good question um all we know about the bulwark is that it ported everything from the weekly standard including a lot of the writers and so forth over to a website once the weekly standard was gutted after Donald Trump uh, came into existence and they all ran for the hills um, and they have gathered unto themselves a whole bunch of conservative writers who write in lots of other magazines and they have their own podcast and they do like an episode a day. So they are a big steaming engine of conservative content. They're immediately given validity by yes. Brian Williams. Yes. Like, oh, and now they're of the bulwark. So Charlie Sykes, come on over and sit here and be and we'll yeah. put bulwark up on the screen. Even though that wasn't a thing three days ago. And that's Bill, Bill Crystal the same. Bill Crystal went from being the editor of Weekly Standard to being some nutcase that keeps hanging around the studio. Go, oh, no, he's he's in, on the bulwark now. So we'll put that on the Chiron. And now he's legitimate, which, yeah. you know, that's, uh, hey, I could put uh, the professional love podcast or drift class below my pretty face and be just as legitimate. And those are established brands that have been around for 15, 15 to years. 10 to 15 years. Yes, yes. right. We have weathered many, many storms. Um, the point being that that the reason they have been – the reason you see them everywhere, the, the reason they get a million downloads a day of their podcast, uh, the reason they're viable is not because they are great or good or noble. That's, that's sort of independent of all that. It's because they have an enormous engine of the mainstream media behind them pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. They Let's are face on. it. They have personal friends. Yes, that's they have what they have. They have Connections. They have, the, Social the, connectives. The worst people in conservative media, and these people were all the worst people in conservative media, right up until the ship sank and they had to swim for their lives, and they landed at MSNBC and mm -hmm. CNN, and suddenly they are they are the they are welcome guests. They're they're the chair is pulled out, and as I noted today, 
uh, now that we're running against Barack Obama, I'm wondering, are we going to yeah. see any of Rick Wilson's greatest hits that we have all been very carefully forgotten? Well, Rick- explain what, what you mean by that, because Rick Wilson, when Barack Obama ran in 2008, yes. which is in our lifetimes, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Rick Wilson had some ideas about how to run against Barack Obama. Well, Obama mania had to be defeated at any cost. <laughs> so, you know what? I hear a lot of good things about this Reverend Wright fellow, this screaming, angry black preacher who doesn't sound like a real patriot, doesn't look like a real American. Let's see if we can't just jam him down Barack Obama's throat sideways and stop his presidency that way. And in case you've forgotten, mm-hmm. if you think that Obamagate and unmasking and all the things that we're going to talk about about this week Mm -hmm. are somehow being force fed into the media by nefarious forces. Mm -hmm. Reverend Wright was three times as big. Yes, it was. And because they had to stop Barack Obama at all costs, because Mm -hmm. the the people who are, are the people who have plush velvet seats on the mainstream media were, the worst Iraq war pimps, the most nefarious liberal uh, uh, slanderers, and they made a fortune doing it. This is how they made their living stomping on people like us and shitting all over our values. And once we started winning, once we started, once their reality started collapsing, they turned their attention to trying to destroy the incoming uh, Obama administration and the candidacy. And and Rick Wilson only knows one way to fight, and that's like a fucking sewer rat. Right. So that's what right. he did. And Rick Wilson is now a sewer rat who hates Donald Trump temporarily until there's a Democratic president and then he's going to go work for Tom Cotton. Um, or but, whoever, right. Whoever. Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley or is. whoever, right. Whoever drags a $20 bill in front of him will get his right. services. Right. He is not your friend. But I feel it's my class, res- Do you remember, excuse me, do you remember sure. uh, Sam Cedar, I believe it was? I do. Walking on the National Mall. And interviewing Republican Tea Party type voters, I they, do. Were, they weren't. This was before the Tea Party, mm-hmm. and saying, "Well, I don't trust Barack Obama because, oh, you know, it, number one, he's a Muslim, Muslim, and number two, Reverend Wright. Oh God, Reverend Wright, and is and mm-hmm. Sam oh. Cedar saying to the person, "Well, you've got to pick one because yeah. Reverend Wright is Christian, and no, so if not. he's going no. to church at Reverend Wright's church, no, it's a Muslim that's, church. That means he's a Christian." No, and the woman really would not accept anything that that Sam Cedar was saying. It was just, oh come on, oh come on. Mm-hmm. He's 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 all the nefarious things I say he is mm-hmm. because I've been absolutely brainwashed by Glenn Beck mm-hmm. and, well, and 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 by Fox News and by you know ten at that point yeah. twenty years of of conservative hate well, radio. Glenn Beck and, was at Fox News at yeah. that point, you know. Yeah. So and so the idea that these that this is a brand new phenomena on the mm-hmm. right is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. They've always been this way, and they've been this way because turning them into these people, engineering these people to become these brain-dead, bleach-guzzling, gun-toting morons is what got Rick's candidates elected. And so this And that was his job, was to get them elected. That was his job, and and he's utterly amoral. He doesn't really give a shit who he hurts or or what burns to the ground uh, around him as long as he gets paid. And he and the rest of the boys of the bulwark uh, made a bet. They bet that Donald Trump would lose and that they would then come to power as the we told you so caucus of the Republican Party. But Donald Trump didn't lose. Suddenly they're on the outs with all these people who write all the checks. Well, where are we going to find a couch to crash on for the next four years? Hey, liberals are dopes. They'll let us do anything. Let's go crash at MSNBC and CNN. Well, how do we get in there? We'll just say shitty things about Donald Trump and we'll be really mean about it and it'll be true. And because they are so desperate for validation from from conservatives, they will give us airtime, they'll give us book deals, they'll give us columns in the New York Times, writing and saying shit that liberals that they wouldn't give the time of fucking day to for 20 years. People on the left have been saying this shit about the Republican Party for decades, and we couldn't get anywhere near a fucking camera at all. Some, and you go to sleep for five minutes, you wake up, and all the people who were shitting on you a day ago now have all the prime seating in the media. And there are no liberals to be found anywhere to ask them really simple questions. So my job, I believe it to be, is to monitor these people, is to keep tabs on them, because I, I absolutely know what their game is. Their game is to ride this out under the cover, under the, under the, uh, the, uh, in the bosom of liberal media until the storm passes. And then they will knife us in the back 
And I have lots of people, dear liberal friends, who say, yeah, 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 temporary, temporary alliances are very important. They do good ads, all of which is true. But, you know, once we're done with them, like, no, 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 <laughs> you know, they're using you, asshole, not the other way around. The people with the credibility, the people with the cachet, the people who were right about everything was us. Not them. They were wrong about everything. You are loaning them your credibility, not the other way around. You are propping them up, not the other way around. And when they are done with you, they will shit on you. They will walk in front of, they will, they will be done with all of their liberal friends. They'll turn around and say, look, I'm a both sides kind of guy. Look and at all my dear friends. It's time to bring friends. the country together. And they'll have you know? three coats of shellac on their light boat, life Let, boats. Let's all be right around away. Tom Cotton, you know, and, and, and you and I will be going, but, 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 but. And all their liberal friends will be going, well, wait a minute, what, but, but no, except those liberal friends will never get time in front of a camera because it's who controls the camera. And the people who control the cameras keep pointing them at Charlie Sykes and Bill Crystal and Rick Wilson, not the other people who were right all along. So this week, I, I listened to the Bulwark podcast every now and then. And this week, uh, Charlie Sykes was promoting an article in which he just strongly recommended that uh, Joe Biden reach out to those McCain Republicans. The McCain Palin Republicans? Those McCain Palin Republicans. He got everything wrong and backwards. And uh, this is an article in the Washington Monthly, uh, but why, uh, why Joe Biden should reach out to McCain Republicans. Um, and my Did Charlie response, Sykes get paid to write this? No, no he, he didn't write it. He promoted it. Oh, he promoted this is, it. This is part okay. of the, the sort of constellation of conservative writings Mm -hmm. That Bulwark uses its media position, which is which is exists solely because they have friends at MSNBC and CNN to push. And this is a constant message with them that that Joe Biden should remain in the center. Joe Biden should reach out to Republicans, which is fine. I have no problem with that. But I, I have a real problem with it coming from Charlie Sykes, because my take on this is like the pilgrims to the Virgin of the Guadalupe of Guadalupe. They should be approaching the Democratic Party on their knees, begging forgiveness. This Donald Trump and the Republican Party that he heads is entirely their fault. They have no business telling a single fucking Democrat what to do about anything. They watched their party fall completely to bits, be taken over by a madman. And all those base people, all their, all of Charlie Sykes's listeners, all of Bill Crystal's readers, all flock to the orange madman. And they're, they, they're, and they're selling one of two stories. Either we never knew, in which case you're too stupid and your opinion is invalid and you never knew, then, then why would I l ever listen to you? Or I knew and I didn't care because they, they were winning me elections, in which case you're amoral and I don't really want, I don't want to give you the time of day. Either way, the Donald Trump Republican Party is entirely your fault. And if you would like to come to the Democratic Party and tell us how to run shit, get a job scrubbing floors for 10 years and work your way up the organization. You do not get to glide in from the apex of the GOP to the apex of the Democratic Party and tell us how to run shit. They that should be not... scrubbing floors at a VA hospital. The absolute For Iraq war veterans. And this idea that these people would need to be courted or pretty please, here's a cookie, let's come on, let's... No, 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 no. <laughs> They're the sinners. They're the ones with blood on their hands. And, mm -hmm. and I see it and you see it and pretty much every liberal I know sees it. And what is fascinating is how deeply invested the mainstream media is in never mentioning the fact that Donald Trump would not exist, but for people like Bill Kristol and Charlie Sykes and Joe Scarborough and Rick Wilson and all the rest of them, that they owe all of us a big fat fucking apology before we do anything for them. And if they can't muster that, then they're running a completely different game. If they can't admit this happened, that their actual history really exists and really did lead to this moment, then they're lying to you. If they're so afraid that someone will ask them some question about what they were doing in 2008 or 2010 or 12 or 14, if they're that terrified that they won't even entertain those questions, they're hiding something. And it cannot be good and it's not, it, it can't be for the benefit of the Democratic Party. That is the end of my little speech about why you can't trust an ever-Trumper. Stuart Stevens <laughs> is my exception. Bruce Bartlett is my exception. Stuart Stevens' book is entitled, as I recall, as I, as I understand it, It Was All a Lie. Yes, liberals are right. Okay, no problem there. <laughs> Boom. I don't want you running the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, but I accept the fact that you accept responsibility for your shit and the shit you did. 
Bruce Bartlett bailed on this party years ago and is one of its most vicious and, and continuous critics. I totally accept that. They're on my team. I do not trust anyone who blocks people and won't won't answer simple fucking questions about how their party got to be this way. And and if, if the subject ever comes up, they fucking lie about it. Donald Trump is just a black swan event. He just showed up on the horizon. He 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 hypnotized the entire party. He mesmerized all these good people who I love I loved and 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 partied with and who were my brothers and sisters. And they just they just lost their minds. Suddenly the Republican Party turned into this other thing overnight in 2016, and I had nothing to do with it, and I'm completely confused. Well, if that's your resume, then no one should ever listen to anything you have to say about anything. So why don't you shut up and go away? Anyway, that that really is the end of my soapbox about <laughs> you I want to take a God. sip of do you want to take a sip of hydrochloroquine i need to take wash, a sip it, of wash it all out now <laughs> i'm just i am just I, like a lot of you out there i am just tired of fighting a fight against people who should have been defeated 20 years ago or should be sued out of existence yeah. economically and in a terms of career yes and yet we keep returning to the same subject and so now Donald Trump is going to run against Barack Obama. Yeah. How's that going to work out for him? Uh, well, to quote <laughs> Lucius Fox from The Dark Knight, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with that. Well, tell Although, them the story of Lucius Fox in case they forgot. Oh, Lucius Fox. Lucius Fox is at Morgan Freeman in The Dark Knight. And and uh, one of the employees there discovers Bruce Wayne's secret and decides that he's going to blackmail Bruce Wayne. And he comes in and says, I want $10 million a year for life. And I want this and I want that because I know your dirty secrets. Ha, ha, ha. I'll out you to the world. And Lucius Fox says to him, words to the effect of, so your employer, the richest man, one of the richest men in the world, who goes out and beats up criminals with his bare hands by night as a vigilante. And your plan is to threaten this man. Is that right? Is that your plan? And the employee suddenly realizes, oh, that's a really, really, really bad idea. And wishes him good luck with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lucius Fox is uh, Bruce Wayne's gadget man. Um, now, I look forward to Donald Trump trying to run against the most popular man in the solar system. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do have a bone to pick with Barack Obama. Well, and, and let's be clear. The reason Barack Obama is so popular, uh -huh. I believe, is because... Mitch McConnell refused to allow him to govern. Yes. So he was unable to push through after Obamacare. He yeah. was unable to push through any other program that might have been controversial, that might have left some people out. Yes. That might have been, you know, something that didn't work out quite right. And he became a figurehead. He, he became the king of America. Yeah. Literally, I mean, just he became just this person who did photo ops and gardens and went to to high schools and hugged people and hugged children. And, you know, you had this this week at, at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, a little mm -hmm. video of him meeting with science students and well, everything he did was connecting with people and being nice. And Halloween, you know, was so fun with the Obamas and killing Osama bin Laden. And killing Osama bin Laden, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, and so because of that, because Mitch McConnell did not allow a single thing to go through the Senate uh, from the president, including filibustering his own motion. Right. Uh, right. That, that's the end. And in a way, it freed Barack Obama to just be a non-controversial nice guy. Mm-hmm. A rhetorical and rhetor that, right and and they they made that bed for themselves yes they did they he certainly was, he's did popular because of them well and, and he's, he's popular because he endured eight years of absolutely unrelenting racism and overt yes. sabotage and outright yep. sedition from yep. mitch mcconnell's republican party the republican party that Charlie Sykes and Rick Wilson all swear to God just lost their minds five minutes ago. Including no, traitor, we, traitor Tom Cotton and his 40 yeah. senators signing, 40, 40 Republican senators and House members signing a seditious letter. Yeah. In print, their names on it. Yeah. So we have, we have 
in our memories, even though Republicans don't, we have memories of that eight-year period. And mm -hmm. we remember what happened. And we remember it as a perfect, near-perfect laboratory experiment in what happens if you actually nominate and elect a centrist, a person mm -hmm. who is David Brooks's wet dream, an absolutely down the middle, I will bend over backwards to, to give Republicans anything they want in exchange for helping me to uh, uh, un, uh, wind down the Iraq war, uh, stop the global economy from collapsing, and providing health care to millions of American people, American people who don't have it, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other stuff I want to do. But we are in the middle of multiple crises, all of which came to a head or were explicitly precipitated by the Republican Party. I was elected to clean up their shit, and I would really appreciate their help in doing so. And for eight years, they told him to go fuck himself loudly and clearly in the most blatantly racist manner possible. Then they nominated and elected the king of the birthers. So we know the Republican Party is absolutely scumbag beyond redemption. I'm talking about Republican voters, Republican bundlers, Republican organizers. If you have an R after your name and you work to get Donald Trump elected, you're and you okay were, with racism. Absolutely. And you were sanguine yeah. with all of this shit that happened during the Obama administration. You are the fucking problem. Period. Full stop. There's no, in my mind, there's no debate about this. This is the starting point of every conversation. So when Barack Obama said that on a phone call, that the, the handling of no, the corruption. This week. You mean this week? This week. Right. This yeah. Week, okay. Um, when he on the phone talks about the coronavirus crisis handling by the White House as an absolute chaotic disaster. That is true. And I was greatly heartened to read that because that, that is a true thing. That is a true fact. My problem came 30 seconds later when 2004 DNC keynote Purple State Obama showed up. And then it was, and I'm quoting, this election that's coming up on every level is so important because what we're going to be battling is, hold on to your seats, not just a particular individual or a political party. What we're fighting against is these are these long-term trends in which being selfish, being tribal, being divided, and seeing the other as the enemy, that has become a stronger impulse in American life. And I cannot convey to you how stunningly wrong that is on every level. I get that in 2004 and 2008, when you're trying to impress, when you're, when you're literally going to Charles Krauthammer's house, when you're courting George Will's good opinion, when you're sucking up to David Brooks, by quoting, um, um, I forget the name of the philosopher, um, Niebuhr. They're, 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 they're at a dinner party and they're quoting Niebuhr to each other. And they're all just giddy because this guy's smart and he's urbane and he's clever. And, and my God, he's well read. Uh, we hate him and we're going to try to destroy him, but at least we can all get along. Those days are over. We had your administration. We had an eight-year test case. And what, what happens if Republicans are actually given the perfect example of every of the Democratic president, they all say they want mm -hmm. a person who will bend over backwards to work with them, who will give them credit for yep. anything they want, who will give them anything mm -hmm. they want, who will meet them at the at the eighty yard line, and and call it halfway. Well, he will at least meet them at the fifty yard line, and then they push him back to the zero yard right. line every time. Yeah. Every time, and then and then the coup de grace was robbing you of your Supreme Court nomination. Mm -hmm. I am absolutely done with that Barack Obama, who keeps pretending that. That that never happened. That this no see this election is about one individual, Mr. President. It really is about one political party. And that individual is Mitch McConnell. <laughs> and, that Mitch McConnell and 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 it's this whole tribal bullshit. Christ yeah. Almighty! While you're at it, why not just nag the Allies during World War II for being too tribal, or the Civil Rights Movement for being too tribal because they were they were on the opposite side of people who had a different opinion than they did. And, and really, isn't that the problem that they disagreed, that they were both in different tribes? No. The problem was one side of the argument was absolutely dead fucking wrong, and the other side was right. And the reason the other side had to rise up and become a tribe was the incredibly depraved behavior of the first group. If the mm -hmm. Republican Party were not a completely uncivilized band of thugs and racists and barbarians, we would not have to gather together to fight them. But we have to. If you want to call that a tribe, fine. I'm all for it. But this bullshit about how it's not about one party or one person, yes, it really is. Yes, it really is. And it, it bothers the shit out of me that you cannot form your mouth to say those words. 
I understand well, that your I'm brand. Gonna, I'm going to defend Barack Obama a little bit, though. All right. In that Barack Obama and uh, Joe Biden, for that yes. matter. Yes. Feel that they have a responsibility to the republic. I understand now, that. Your responsibility to the Republic is, as far as far as I can see, is my, look. My we should have we should have pushed the Confederates out to the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, in 1865, and been done with it. Yes, that uh, is my position. I stick to know, that position. And, yes, and Barack Obama and Biden, their position is: look, Republicans are still Americans. Right. And your your opinion, I believe, is we cannot. Be on both sides of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. That is absolutely, my opinion. Yes, yeah. and you can't. Yeah, and you can't. I don't know how. And this is again uh, something I would ask Barack Obama if I had him on the podcast. I wouldn't yell mm -hmm. at him, but I'd say mm -hmm. respectfully, "How do you continue to pretend that this isn't about the Republican Party and this isn't mm -hmm. about Donald Trump as the manifestation of the Republican Party and as the manifestation of the Newt Gingrich, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity Republican Party?" How do you continue to maintain that this isn't about them when it manifestly is about them? They are the problem. And I don't understand how you wrap your – now, I understand that your brand is is bringing together and purple Unity, America. Right, and that right. there, are, there are tens of millions of kids in this country, especially African-American kids, who look up to you as a father figure. And right. you, are, you are living for history now. I get that. I totally get that. That is a luxury I – or that, that is that is a burden I don't have to carry. <laughs> I'm just an asshole yeah, podcaster. Right, right. I'm just a blogger. But I still am baffled by the fact that at this late date, you cannot bring yourself to say, no, the problem is Mitch McConnell. The problem well, is Donald Trump. Yeah. And the problem is the party that created them. And I think the, he's leaving that to us. <laughs> okay. Well, and that, preserving I, his brand as a uniter for the children that look up to him as dad. Probably so. That and and that does not excuse being willfully blind to, you know, in print and in in his discourse mm -hmm. to the wrong that has been done to him and his movement. Well, and that's what's so insidious about yeah. republicanism. Yeah. See, in public, it can often be asymptomatic. <laughs> um, you know, yes, it's kind of like COVID in that it, way. <laughs> you know, and, and this is something that actually this this quarantine. Um, has lifted the veil on. Now you and I saw yeah. it during the Iraq war when yes. George Bush was the greatest president on earth. He was the most brilliant tactician. He was the most brilliant general. He was the, the greatest economist. He was all the Republicans really, really sold George Bush as the apotheosis of conservatism. He's just the best of the best of the best. And look at that vice president. He's even better. And when it all fell apart, they suddenly didn't know who he was. Where, what are you talking about? I'm not a Republican. I never supported him. And exactly the same pattern is being repeated with Donald Trump on crack. It's happening twice as fast, and the destruction is twice as lethal, but it's exactly the same pattern uh, from exactly the same people. And so we already know this, but most people out there, most people, normal people who aren't podcasters, who aren't bloggers, who haven't been studying this stuff intently for decades and writing about it and thinking about it for decades, might not notice that their Republican family member or friend or the person at the store or the person in the pew next to him in the church is, in fact, a raving racist asshole because republicans have been taught to hide their disease in public <laughs> you know it's not polite to walk around just shrieking the n-word every time you see barack obama it's right. not polite or brandishing to... a gun just yeah. because a woman is governor right i mean that is that's what's going on in michigan right yeah but now it, it's it, so republicanism has gone relatively undetected in the heartland because it's asymptomatic now when republicans get together and they talk among themselves Oh my goodness! All all the all the sores on their body are are exposed in their glory, and they talk about Hillary Clinton in in the most vicious terms, and they talk about Barack Obama in the most racist terms. But they're smart enough to know that you don't say that shit in church. You know, you might you might just sort of wink and nod at each other. You know, that old clan. You know, the secret handshake shit. But you don't actually say this shit out loud. You let Rush Limbaugh do that. You let Sean Hannity do that. You you express your frustration with the goddamn government, and then you go home and you know jerk off to Sean Hannity. But now we see them in all their glory. Now I think everyone should see them in all their glory. This is who they have always been, in private, among each other, under under the uh, under the rose, as they say. 
But now they're just doing it out and proud in public because Donald Trump says, yeah, fuck it. It's cool. Go ahead. Embrace your inner clansmen, brothers. Come on out of the woodwork. It's safe. And they've done it. They've left themselves with no way out. There's no way to back away from loving Donald Trump. Except, of course, when his regime collapses, you will see two, Tea Party 2.0. They never uh, liked the class, I got to I got to warn you about something this morning on Fox and Friends. They aired an interview that was on an earlier Fox program. I'm not sure which one, but it was uh -huh. aired on Fox and Friends this morning. The secret Trump voter, the uh -huh. Trump voter who won't tell you uh -huh. that will never talk to a pollster. No, but you know, they're out there and they're just they just don't want the burden mm -hmm. of being attacked on Facebook or in their families mm -hmm. for supporting Donald Trump. But secretly, they know that the president's doing the best job he can. Uh huh. And that's now that's how they're going to pretend and convince their re I, I hate. Doing this, Drift Glass, using the term reprogrammable meat bags is not in my lexicon. <laughs> yes, but it should be in Merriam Webster's dictionary alongside <laughs> Drift Glass. It fire. should be given credit. Yeah, but that's what they are. That's their, yeah. their, their meat bags. We are all but meat bags. If, what I'm interested in is not the meat bag. I'm interested in the programming. Yeah. Because the be programming is what you can see. You can point to the TV screen and mm -hmm. say, aha, we now have. Uh, unmasking as the mm -hmm. latest brainwash word that's unmasking. being used on yeah. Fox without any explanation as to what it is. Mm -hmm. But it's terrible. It, but it's Solyndra. It's Benghazi. It's a an exotic word that's not used every day. Mm -hmm. And it's a trigger word to trigger strong emotion. It's Burisma. It's you know, Alinsky. How did Burisma drop, right? It's Alinsky. It's Soros. It's very Soros. sinister sounding. Alinsky. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so uh, this segment saying you know really there's a tremendous number of secret trump supporters out there so you shouldn't feel alone mm -hmm. if you support the president because yeah. there are just it's just not reflected in the polls because there are so many people who will not talk to pollsters because they don't want the hassle of the angry left coming after them well let me speaking for the angry left yeah <laughs> um as a middle-aged white guy yeah um Republicans I have run into in Springfield have been remarkably candid about their really contemptuous opinion and their crazy conspiracy theories and their deep belief that Barack Obama really was a Muslim no matter what he says. Mm -hmm. And on and on and on and on. And these are pillars of the community. And the ones that don't believe that shit necessarily are perfectly willing to nod and nod and nod and count up the contributions and count up the votes and know that Rodney Davis will be reelected because yeah. these yeah. fucking morons will vote for them. And I don't necessarily believe that stuff, but I believe in tax cuts because I'm very rich. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm in it for. And if I have to put up with listening to these rubes rant about, you know, Bircher shit in front of me. Well, I sit in my coffee and eat my scrambled eggs. Well, that's what I'll do because at the end of the day, these idiots are going to give me a tax cut. And if I have to put up with Donald Trump, you know, fuck the liberals. I, I don't like him anyway. So he's going to make – he's going to he's going to own the libs. He's going to give me a tax cut and my life's going to continue being great. So that's – you have these cynical manipulators at the top and you have the Republican base voters who are very much – reprogrammable meat bags. <laughs> I don't like that word myself, but I understand it. And mm -hmm. what what bothers me so much is I don't consider it a kind thing to say. It isn't. But then I watch and I and it, it fits. It does. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, it fits. wait a minute. Like, I see oh. the programming and I see the programming work mm -hmm. that it's not well, you know, 6 months ago it was the economy's great. My right. my my 401k is doing great. And that means Donald Trump's a great president. Right. Now it's, well, you know, a lot of people out there are secretly supporting the president and I don't have to tell a pollster whether, well, how sure. I'm voting. No, no. And you, you can see it in real time, this change of, we're just, no, we're just going to program you that you have to vote a certain way and give us the tax cut result that we want up here in Fox News land. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did want to point out, Drift Glass, that uh, Lindsey Graham has responded to Donald Trump's tweet about <laughs> subpoena subpoenaing yeah. Barack Obama. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> he yeah. said, I, I don't think I can, as mm -hmm. chairman of the Senate 
Intelligence Committee, I don't, or Judiciary Committee, I don't believe I can do that, Mr. President. But even if I could, you got to be careful what you wish for. Well, and as you pointed out to me this week, and, mm-hmm. and I, I gently held your hand and said, it doesn't matter. Uh-huh. These people yeah. do not, these people are, are, have the part of their brain that recognizes hypocrisy or conflict has just been burned out of their brain. They don't even see it anymore. That, that, Donald Trump can say on one day that he has absolute fucking authority to do anything he wants. Presidents have that authority. I'm a king. I can do whatever I want. The next day say, oh, my God, can you believe Barack Obama did the investigated uh, Michael Flynn? Oh, my God. That's the worst scandal that's ever happened in American history. We need to haul his ass into court and make him testify. And not, well, he did it as president, right? And you just said presidents have absolute authority to do whatever they want. And the little tiny part of the Republican brain that can recognize, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense, was burned out around 1994. And it's mm-hmm. never going to grow back. And we should stop waiting for them to get outraged by the hypocrisy that they exhibit every day. They're not capable of doing it. All they know is the black guy did it and it's wrong. The white guy did it and it's right because they're a bunch of fucking racists. This all comes down to race. The reason that they're hauling Barack Obama back on the stage is because he's black. And mm-hmm. they want to run against a black guy. That's the reason. The Republican Party is a racist party. And if you are a Republican, you're either racist or you're racist adjacent and you're really cool with it, which is even worse, actually, because you fucking well know better. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, would you like to talk more about unmasking? Uh, Yes, I would. I wrote a post on Facebook and then I cross posted it over at Crooks and Liars. And it's just a quick explanation as to what unmasking actually is for your Facebook friends. And it's been shared like. 70 times already so tell us a story auntie blue gal that's great (laughs) this whole fake unmasking fake scandal from hannity and it's primarily hannity that's pushing this and then of course trump picks it up and it's off we go uh is really easy to understand and easy to explain there is a u.s spy or there was a u.s spy in the national security group named michael flynn Yes. We find out about it because we are listening in on Russian spy conversations. The government is not allowed to report on U.S. citizens except when there's evidence that spying is going on. So if Russian spies order a pizza in D.C., that pizza guy is not going to be put on a watch list. But if the Russian spies talk secrets with someone at the Pentagon, people like the president need to know that. That's called unmasking. The president gets to know the name of the U.S. citizen at the Pentagon who is trading secrets with Russian spies. Mm -hmm. This the masking protects pizza guys, but unmasks U.S. citizens who are doing spy stuff. Michael Flynn was caught when his voice was taped by our intelligence agencies who were listening in on Russian spy conversations. This was a huge deal. The CIA went through channels to unmask Michael Flynn and tell the president that there's this guy at the Pentagon trying to make deals with Russian spies for natural gas stock holdings. It was about money and giving Flynn natural gas stock in exchange for dropping Russian sanctions. That's what it was about. Mm -hmm. So the FISA court says, oh, my God, yes, warn the president about this U.S. citizen, which you ordinarily are not supposed to do. Who was the president at the time, Blue Gal? Barack Obama. It doesn't matter who it was, actually. No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Exactly right. Warn the president about this U.S. citizen because, OMG, (laughs) it's a U.S. citizen promising to give away national security, our national interest, for money. And he has the power to do it. And on Inauguration Day, Obama sits down with the new president, Trump. And one of the things he tells Trump is, OMG, don't hire Michael Flynn because he's doing Russian spy stuff. Mm -hmm. Trump hires him anyway because the black guy isn't going to tell him what to do. Well, and Michael Flynn was a cheerleader for Lock Her Up. Right. He was Lock Her Up. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Now, at that point, Michael Flynn was put in charge of national security for like nine days Mm -hmm. and the spy stuff catches up with him and he's fired because he lied to the vice president. That was what that was the story then at the time. 
But now it's May 2020, and Donald Trump and Fox News are scared Trump might not be reelected because, let's face it, he's a big fat fail on COVID because in January he put the stock market ahead of people dying of a virus. That's an easy mistake to make when you call Lou Dobbs the news. (laughs) So Hannity rolls into action and makes unmasking this magic word. It's just like Solyndra. It's just like Benghazi. It's a trigger word to get you to think there's this huge crime that Barack Obama committed, unmasking. Mm -hmm. Hannity never explains what it is, but boy, it sounds bad. It's some sort of Obama crime. It isn't. It is just a distraction from 88,000 dead American citizens. Mm-hmm. The end. That's it. Well, and just one little bit of um, context for that is that wonderful story. The reason we had put additional sanctions on Russia is because they spent a shitload of money on troll farms, trashing our election, hacking our election, hacking mm-hmm. the DNC's server, trying to... Uh, gut the U.S. election and toss it to Donald Trump. They interfered in the United States election in a big, big way to cause Donald Trump to win. That was their goal. Mm-hmm. And the re- that's why additional sanctions were loaded, because you're not supposed to do that. And what caused the national security apparatus to be very suspicious is because we loaded up Russia with additional uh, with additional sanctions, we closed down some of their compounds. We we froze some assets, and they didn't do anything. They didn't mm-hmm. do anything, which is completely uh, uh, unusual for them. Mm-hmm. It, it's 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 tit for tat. It's, it's this. It's they do something, we do something. We do something, they do something. They didn't do anything. They couldn't figure out why the hell Putin isn't isn't reacting. Why why is he retaliating? He, right. And the reason was he had this insider in the Republican Party in the incoming Trump administration who was promising him, "Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, we'll get in there." Sanctions will go away. You'll we'll take care a, of it. We'll take yeah. care of it. We'll take care of it. Don't even worry about it. And that Cut was and Michael deals. Flynn. That was Michael Flynn. Also for money. Also doing it for money. Then he lied about it. All of that is illegal. And if it had just been a matter of, you know, we have a separate national policy that we believe Russia is our friend. We're going to do it all out in the open. We're, you know, I think it's horrifying, but okay, fine. That's that's your that's your prerogative. But they didn't. They did it behind closed doors. They did it dirty. They did it secret, and then they lied about it. And that's the crime. And that's and the they crime. Did Michael it in exchange for money, 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 and then money Michael and Flynn. Yep. And then Michael Flynn lied about it. Then he admitted he lied about it and pled guilty to it. There is no crime here other than the fact that Fox News has not been bombed from space <laughs> that the only crime left is that fox news still exists as a news entity it right. should it should it should be banned under some some reading of the foreign espionage act it mm-hmm. the idea that you have a, a a quote-unquote news agency that is actively trying to destroy the country in which it exists should be problematic for the government of that country and for the citizens of that country and the reason it isn't because we have a free market and, and everybody can do whatever they want the the crime here is that the Republican Party exists as it as it does today. That Fox News still exists. That right wing hate yeah. radio continues to flourish. Those are the crimes, and it's led to and it um, is sedition. It is absolute sedition against the United States of America, regardless of who's president. Right, and it's regardless one disaster after president. another. The Republican Party for the last forty years has been a record of of, of escalating catastrophe, cover up. Blame shifting, racism, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, interrupted with tax cuts for rich people. That's the Republican Party. I did want to mention that uh, Kathleen Parker, who we've talked about in yes, the past. We have. Yes, we have. Uh, but she had an interesting article in WAPO, or editorial in WAPO, about noticing that the Coke Industries Americans for Prosperity outfit uh-huh. is has decided not to fund these reopen rallies. Oh. Oh. Um, and so they fizzled. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is what Kathleen Parker said in the Washington Post. The protesters began losing steam when the Koch network, underwriters of the Tea Party movement from a decade ago, good for her for noticing that, mm-hmm. uh, decided to run with scientists instead of the gun-toting provocateurs trampling the spring green grass around state capitals. Mm-hmm. The chief executive of Americans for Prosperity, the main political arm of the network, said... 
the group prefers working with doctors, data crunchers, and public policy leaders to create guidelines for a safe and staggered reopening of American businesses. Uh huh. I think they also prefer avoiding liability. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, once the lawyers got involved and said, do you realize how... Do you realize that if people die at your rallies from the COVID, you could be held responsible? Oh, oh. I guess we'll go with the scientists and the oh. staggered reopening of businesses then. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a much safer position for you to go to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and again, I'm I, at the risk of repeating myself too often, these these COVID idiots, mm -hmm. every time you come across anything about that, you need to repeat. They cashed those Glenn Beck checks in 2009 with the Tea Party. Right. They do not get to rebrand as reopening patriots, as somehow being oppressed by the virus or their governor. And this segues into our governor. Right. Uh, burn the lifeboats, who, people, is what we're trying to say. Who, we're burn trying to say burn the lifeboats. Mm-hmm. In Illinois, we love the governor. Uh, today, in today's uh, very expensive state journal register, I do, yeah. I'm really trying to decide whether we can keep the local paper coming into our house. It's now $60 a month for yeah. a newsletter that comes every day to the house. Yeah, it's mostly, uh, um, mostly crazy editorials and, and uh, ads, yeah. you know, and yeah. obituaries. It's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Just isn't. But Pritz, I, I'm still getting it because I, I'm glad to read about Governor Pritzker. And here's what the paper said today about uh, the governor of Illinois. Uh, Pritzker says he sympathizes with elected officials struggling with their choices amid the pandemic. This is about reopening the state. He has a plan that is in stages by how rural and, and how many cases the, just the area has. He's divided the state into five regions. And uh, it is it is very much based on science and facts and data. If you've had a lot of cases in your city or, or area, you're going to be closed down for longer. And if you haven't, and there is one county in Illinois that's had zero cases. Yeah. I understand why, you know, southeastern Illinois not having cases, they might open sooner. But they don't have much down there in terms of commerce. Humans. It's farms. Mm -hmm. So... I understand that. Um, and here's here's his quote. Uh, he sympathizes with elected officials. What I don't have sympathy for is those so intent on disregarding science and logic, so afraid to tell their constituents what they may not want to hear, that they put more people's lives at risk. And then he turns to the elected officials. You weren't elected to do what's easy. You were elected to do what's right. He said there that while there would be consequences, there is no consequence the state could impose that is greater than the harm you will do to your own community. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of him <laughs> now, for saying that. Let's compare and contrast him. Oh, to Governor Hedge Fund? With Governor Hedge Fund, with disgraced former Governor Hedge Fund, who promised. Was, I thought he was going to move to his Italian villa when he, he lost the election. He promised. His wife promised us that we're going to flounce off to Italy and never see us again if we lose. And you lost, so you should leave. But apparently he can't do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead, he's sticking around in his fake cowboy outfit, and he's writing uh, that this is worse than the disease. He, he okay. blasts. Rounder blasts. This is a headline from, where is it? Where is it? Where is this paper I'm quoting from? It's the uh, it's Chicago. It's NBC Chicago. Okay. Former Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner believes it's time to reopen the state. And, and uh, amid the coronavirus pandemic, blaming politics for the decision to keep restrictions in place. In a text message, Rauner argued that the state's phased reopening plan is a boon to Democrats who he said are looking to benefit politically from the coronavirus, which is just about uh -huh. the filthiest, shittiest thing you can say. Now, why is and shitty? That's why. Why is Governor Hedge Fund siding with armed lunatics taking trying to storm state capitals around the country? Because he wants to be in politics still. Now, contrast this with Governor Hedge Fund's headline from September of 2018 when he was running and losing uh, an attempt to reelect himself, having failed to even propose a budget for two years. Do you know what he was back then, Blue Gal? You know, you know what he was calling himself back then? No, what was he calling himself back then? I'm reading the headline directly from the State Journal Register. Rauner dubs himself a centrist. Yes, 
He's a centrist. He sat in an interview and blamed the extremes on both sides, denouncing Lord. the extremes on both sides. And he just kept failing to answer the question, did you vote for Donald Trump? Did you vote for Donald Trump? Did you vote he for Donald Trump? He wouldn't answer that question. And I remember he, that. He just stared into the middle distance with his dead eyes and just changed the subject. I'm not going to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. You know, it's really extremes on both sides are the problem, you know, and he's, this is, this is what they do. This is the, these are the two notes they know how to play when they are trying to keep power or knock Democrats off from power. They, they side with the, 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 their own party, their own party is a shit pile of bigots and imbeciles. When they're trying to impress the press, when they're trying to mollify the media, Suddenly, it's the extremes on both sides, Blue Gal. It's, it's a, you know, I'm a centrist. I, I play it right down the middle. That didn't work for Rauner. He lost big in Illinois. And now we have a governor who actually gives a shit about whether people live or die in this state. And who will side with scientists as opposed to armed gun nuts who want to pry the doors of the state house open and let viruses in. Mm -hmm. They're plague rats. And they should be treated with great deference as citizens, but their brains are full of plague rats telling them crazy shit that Sean Hannity told them to, to, to do. And we don't need to respect that. I really do believe that part of the problem we have in Trump country, in this central Illinois area, is that people have been way too polite for yep. way too long. And yeah. they just they, they pretend that Crazy Uncle Liberty isn't crazy or Crazy Uncle Liberty is just a fringe group or that it'll go away or it's just impolite. Crazy Uncle Liberty talks about this shit all the time. They have no problem spouting off their insane beliefs. And if your reaction to that is, let's just not talk about it. Let's pretend it's not happening. You know, it really is the extremes on both sides. You end up with a fucking lunatic like Trump in the White House. It's mm -hmm. high time for people of goodwill to come to the aid of their country, to point to their Republican friends and neighbors and family members and say, no, shut the fuck up, you goddamn lunatic. You are the problem. I don't want to hear another fucking word out of your lie hole until you're off Fox News for a year. You're a junkie. And I don't want to hear the words of a junkie about how great their drug is. Anyway, I, I promised I'd be off my soapbox and I got right back on it. I apologize. <laughs> but really, I, I, I love you, Drift Class. You know that. And I you know. know I'm so proud to be your wife. And I know for a fact all this will be edited out, so I'm not really worried about it at all. <laughs> no, it won't. No, it um, won't. I, I actually think that was your finest moment in the podcast. Thank you. Well, that's that's bad. <laughs> it's been shit up till now, but hey. No, I didn't say that. Hey. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week we have another dog. This week's internet dog is Elvis. Elvis was sent in by our English correspondent, Andy in England. Hi, Andy. Andy, Andy hey. A Andy had co coronavirus. He did. And I, I read that. It was several weeks ago he wrote me to tell me, and I wanted to write him a big, long letter. And I never sat down to write him and tell him we love him. And I hope I'm glad he's better. He is better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Elvis belongs to Flo, and Flo is uh, the little baby <laughs> who was in Internet Kitty pajamas long, long ago, very early on in our Internet Kitty uh, series. Uh, we posted a picture of Flo in her Internet Kitty pajamas oh. uh, long ago. Well, Elvis belongs to Flo. Uh, um, <laughs> Elvis Andy. is the breed known as the Golden Omnivore. <laughs> <laughs> he'll even eat a gym bag yeah. so you have to watch out for elvis but you know whenever he eats you know for a fact that is freshly poured mm -hmm. whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck your cat or dog will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured and then i have in the notes sing the song sing friend. the song friend do it. Forget. do it i swear to god <laughs> I swear to God, this is the most popular part of this podcast. I can talk for, for a month. I can hold up pictures. I can I can go topless. It doesn't matter. When I hear that my kids sing along with you on mm -hmm. the when I have the podcast on, then I'm like, okay, I can't not sing it. May, may, I, may I reveal a terrible secret about our family? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My wife has, in, has invented a song for every child and every cat mm -hmm. in this house. In a every separate cat, individual every composition. Every child has a song. Which are, which are great songs. Which are really well, good. I, I urge true. her to write them down and we'll have our own Blue Gal okay. songbook. Well, when I got to I'm the meanest mommy in the whole wide world, I think I reached my limit. I think yeah. that, that proved that three is enough. Three kids is enough. 
But at any rate, uh, freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Elvis at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise, we will be reading more letters next week. We will. I have promised myself that we need to get through some more of your letters. We so appreciate mm-hmm. your writing to us. Hashtag save the post office. And don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity, this is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal, Patreon, GoFundMe, Buy Me a Coffee. Thank you, everybody who's donated. We have a P.O. box that we Mm -hmm. go and check, and uh, it's all there. All the information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. So, Blue Gal, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Driftglass, the Internet Kitties are starting their own Unity Task Force, but you can't join. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.